Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. We are going to have a look at what we did in the last episode and we are going to... No, we're not going to finish the living desert area because we will have left some little space open. But I have a few ideas what we are going to do here. But before we talk about that, we are going to have a look at what we've done in the last episode. But first of all, let's have a look at our amazing herd of blue wildebeest. So many of them in here. I believe we have three or four babies um, right now. Yeah. So here we are entering the area of the living desert with the Somali wild ass. I think the zoo has reached a state now where those movie scenes in the beginning and in the end get a little bit lucky but all in all I'm still happy with the performance of the zoo. So I think we are not going to have any further problems in the future, so we can build, yeah, I think a long time before we have to end this soon. So here we are. In the last episode, we extended the habitat for the black rhino and did a little African desert savanna thing like, uh, yeah, combined habitat for the Adax, the Dama Gazelle and for the Black Rhino. What we are going to do in today's episode is we are going to have another uh, visitor. No, it's not a visitor. It's an inhabitant. Is that the correct word? Um, yeah, we have another species added to our little savanna area and that is the first thing that we are going to do. I asked you guys in the comments last video, to, uh, I asked you guys for commenting last video and tell me what animal should be included here in the savanna area. Uh, most of you guys said it has to be the ostrich and I have to agree. That was the first animal that came to my mind and I thought that would make a lot of sense because if we would have another hoofed animal like the zebra or something like that it would be a little bit kind of boring I think. So I think the ostrich is the best option that we had. But before we are going to put the ostrich in we have to prepare the habitat a little bit because the ostrich it will need some food enrichment and some uh, yeah toy enrichment as well. So I decided I wanted to have this uh, box for uh, the food enrichment and put some rocks around it so that it is not to be seen that obviously so hide it a little bit from the eyes of our viewers so that it looks like natural behavior when the animals go there and uh, go for some food in here so some rocks and some foliage to cover it up a little bit and uh, you won't see it uh, when you are in the visitor area um, yeah and that is, uh, I think that's pretty cool if you just can't see that there is an uh, enrichment item right there. So that everything looks really natural. Yeah, and after this is done, uh, just some signs here for the ostrich as well. I am well prepared. I have those custom signs for almost every animal that is in the game prepared already. So no matter what animal we put in next, I'm going to have those signs already ready. Um, yeah, and after the ostrich moved in, we are going to continue with our living desert area because there's one animal left from the DLC that we don't have in here yet. Uh, for the arid animal pack and that is the dromedary camel. Yes, I know you guys didn't vote for the dromedary camel to be the last. The last one should have been the dama gazelle but as I decided I wanted to have the dama gazelle and the adax in the same habitat, uh, the dama gazelle was a little bit earlier in there as they were planned. 
I hope you guys don't mind that. As I said, today is going to be the dromedary episode. And we are going to build something for the dromedary right here in this area. But before we are going to do that, we are going to have a look at our ostrich. So here's some real-time footage right in between the video. Not at the end, because at the end of the video we are just going to have a look at our dromedary camels and we won't go back to the ostrich. But I planned once we have finished the living desert area, we are going to have a small little tour around this area so that you guys can see everything that we created in here for the last, I think, five, six or seven episodes right now. Yeah, that means that we are going to have one more episode in this area where we are going to build and where we are going to finish this whole area. And that is going to be the, yeah, the surprise habitat that I'm planning for you guys. We are going to have something pretty big right in here. Because I think it is time. Brooksburg Zoo is such a big zoo right now. It's time for the big animals, I think. We already do have the black rhino, but I think we might go a little bit bigger. So if you guys are curious or if you guys already have an idea what might be next to this area and what would fit this area, then yeah, just leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, but now let's start with building for the dromedary camel. Um, I have to tell you guys, as I do sometimes, I had the problem that I didn't record some little parts of this video, of this creation. So um, yeah, but I have good news. Because of that, I decided in the end that I'm going to build something very special for you guys. Something that we don't have in Brooksburg yet. And something that many zoos, especially in the US, do have on a regular basis. Uh, and you might have read it in the video description already. We are going to have a feeding station for the dromedary camel, where our guests can go to and feed the dromedary. In theory, because practically it's not going to happen in this game. But wouldn't this be a great idea for any future DLC to have something like animal encounters? I think they are very, very common in US zoos, as I said already. So there are many zoos that have animal encounters, especially for the giraffe, where you can feed the giraffes. Or I have seen something in Lorry Park Zoo in Tampa where they have a feeding station or an animal encounter as it is called for uh, the Indian rhino as well where you can feed and pet the Indian rhinos. I also did do the safari tour in the San Diego Wild Animal Park. I think it is called like that. San Diego Wild Animal Park. Yeah, it's not the zoo, it's the Wild Animal Park. It's uh, the kind of safari park in San Diego. Uh, where you can have a safari tour to uh, through this huge African exhibit and uh, where it is also possible to feed the uh, giraffes from, uh, from a platform from a jeep and you also can feed the Indian rhinos in the Asian section which we did both and was uh, such a great uh, such a great thing to come that close to the animals and uh, yeah, that would be such a cool addition to Planet Zoo, I think. And such a great way where our visitors of the zoo can interact with the animals directly. Uh, yeah, maybe that is something that could happen in the future. That would be really, really, really cool. So um, yeah, what we did here, what I did here is build the indoor habitat 
no it's not an indoor habitat, built a stable for the dromedary camel. I wanted to have those dromedary camels right in front of our living desert area so when you pass by this area you can already see the dromedary camel and you are giving a little hint of what you can await in here. So that is what I wanted to have and uh, to um, to draw the attention of the guests to that area so that they actually want to come in here. Yeah, so uh, therefore, as per usual, I built the stable for the dromedary camel with a little staff area in there as well. I didn't build it that big as I did in Litchfield Zoo, which was, uh, yeah, very very huge for the animals uh, yeah and here was the part where I did forget to record because I usually wanted to show you guys how you can build something like this feeder that I had built for uh, yeah for the interior here for our stable it is not usable for the animals but it is such a great addition and uh, gives the whole thing so much more realism I think uh, yeah as I said unfortunately I didn't hit the record button and I was very sad about that because I thought oh my god I tried to do something different and show you something different in this video and then I forget to hit the record button well it is what it is but uh, as I said it led to the idea to build something different for you guys and I think it is nicer for you to see the feeding station than seeing me build those feeders for the animals. Yeah, we're almost done with the interior of our building. Just giving it a little bit used look in here and some more decorations and some tools in here as well. Nothing spectacular because you've already seen so many things to put in the inside of those uh, stables. There's only so much you can do, so nothing new in this episode, I think. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, as I said in the last video, don't forget to hit the like button on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so my channel can grow and don't forget to leave a comment if you have to say something, if you want to tell me what you want to see in the next video or what you think you're going to see in the next video because I told you it's going to be a surprise animal or maybe it's going to be more than just one animal, maybe it's going to be two animals, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you think about that. Yeah, and at this point as well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the massive amount of viewers for the episode where we built the habitat for the black rhino. Um, yeah, the video was not even two weeks old and we do already have more than 1000 views for that video, which is huge. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And do that for this video as well, please. <laughs> okay, so um, I took the effort in this video as well to build some special kind of roof or to go a little bit more into that, not just putting down a roof like we did in the last episodes, but give it a little bit more of support structure with these wooden beams all around there. It took quite some time, but I think it looks really, really, really great when you are inside the building and just have a look upwards. So uh, yeah, very, very realistic and I really do love how the whole thing looks. 
and if you did that once it is not that hard to do it the next time because if you if you know what to do and how to do it then it's pretty pretty simple Yeah, and never forget to connect those beams with each other so that it could hold the test of being a real life build and uh, wouldn't crash. Yeah, here you can already see the whole structure. Just copying the wall to the other side and then we are almost ready. Yeah, just using those arctic roof um, or wall pieces uh, because I think they make pretty nice roofs. And we did that before as well, so... Yeah, and here we are! Yeah, that is also uh, something that I did off-screen, um, those uh, gates for the animals. Because I realized that we didn't have any gates for our animals, uh, for our antelopes and the gazelle. So I decided to build something like that for them and I copied them just around and put them down for our dromedary camels as well. So nothing, nothing very special about that. Yeah, just closing the gaps here. And then we are going to build a new fence. Uh, first I tried to use the same fence that we already did have for the uh, Somali wild ass. I wanted to say Nubian wild ass. No, it's a Somali wild ass. Uh, but I thought it looked a little bit too modern and I didn't want to have that for an animal like the dromedary camel. So I thought that it wouldn't it wouldn't be fitting and uh, it would look way more interesting if we have something like this wooden structure here so I decided to go with that yeah, and I also didn't like those wooden beams that we have in here so I wanted to have some tree trunks so um, right in a minute I'm going to delete those wooden beams and go for the tree trunks because they look so much better I think Yeah, and here you can see what I mean. It is so much better with those uh, tree trunks. So, uh, yeah. That's what I wanted to have right here. Yeah, and as I said, I wanted to have that um, habitat to be seen from our main street. Um, I didn't want it to be a habitat that you can see directly from the main street, but uh, yeah, like it wasn't designed to be seen from the main street. That is what I meant. So uh, we're going to have some uh, some hatches uh, right before that, and also some uh, some plants, and I guess a little bit of fencing as well. Don't know right now, but we'll see in a minute. Um, 
yeah so that you can see the animals but to come closer to them and even come close to the feeding station you have to go into the living desert area yeah. once more just closing up some gaps doing some decoration with rocks and foliage right here and there Uh, and as you could see a few minutes ago, um, I created something like a holding pen, like we do have for so many animals in here already. Uh, but I wanted that holding pen to not just be a holding pen for the animals, but the separated area where our visitors can feed the animals. That's where uh, the idea came to my mind uh, when I said, okay, let's do something like that, because we don't want something like a, just a holding pen for the male animals when there's babies around or stuff like that. So uh, let's just do something different, something that we don't have in the zoo already. And I really love to create these desert habitats here in the uh, yeah in this moderate climate because I do have another zoo, another sandbox zoo, as many of you guys know, Litchfield Zoo, that is based in Australia, and it is in Australian desert, I think, or I, I just don't know. But it is so much harder to do, uh, yeah, terrain work in Australia, because if you paint something like uh, dirt uh, on the floor, you almost can't see that so it doesn't make sense to create dirt because dirt and sand and uh, even uh, grass almost do have the same color and that said from someone that is colorblind I know uh, but it is hard to tell the difference so you don't have that great uh, contrast in there which makes it pretty pretty hard to create some interesting habitats without using any rocks or stuff like that. So you can create very nice habitats here in this moderate climate by using rock color, dirt color and uh, grass and stuff like that and make it look interesting. But if you are building in a desert environment or in Australia especially, it is pretty pretty hard to make it look interesting by just coloring the ground. So uh, I enjoy it a lot more here in Brooksburg Zoo, I have to say. I, not to be said that the habitats in Litchfield are not beautiful, they indeed are, but yeah, it is, it is so much harder to create something very interesting with that, uh, yeah, with that environment, with that climate. So. Yeah, and here it is. We are creating the feeding station. I wanted to have uh, yeah, a staff member in there that will guide our visitors. So if you have something like these animal encounters in real life zoos, you will have staff members as well that take care of you and the animals and uh, have a look at uh, yeah people following the rules of feeding the animals not touching the animals if it isn't allowed so that nobody get hurt not the animal and not the visitors so um, yeah to have a staff member in here I could have used two options first option would have been that I place a little piece of uh, of the staff path down here which is not connected to the regular path and just put a staff member on there so that he can't escape. Which sounds pretty mean and I think it is pretty mean so I didn't want it that way. So what other option do we have then? I thought okay we do have the entertainers that uh, yeah that do tell the people about the animals and uh, doing a little bit of a show and that would have been a great way I thought to have them in here 
they will tell the people about the animals um, uh, people will gather around him so that it actually looks that they are taking part in uh, the yeah in the public feeding of the dromedary camel so i decided to have this uh, talking point as a talking point or stuff like that in here so that we actually do have a staff member that uh, yeah, that draws our visitors to that habitat. And it works out pretty fine. You will see it at the end of the video. You will see that we do have our entertainer here and uh, do have a lot of guests uh, Yeah, standing around here. So it actually looks like they would take part in feeding the animals and also the dromedary camels are quite often in uh, this little yeah holding pan just did a little bit of decoration not too much uh, created a sign for the dromedary feeding uh, where I wrote down uh, when it uh, yeah when it takes place every day and yeah some some decoration some carrots and apples where our viewers can feed the animals with those things yeah now it is time for the interior of the habitat and once that is done we can finally have the animals in here something that i'm very sad of is that we don't have color morphs here in sandbox mode that often as we do have in franchise mode we do have a black dromedary camel in lichfield zoo which i'm very proud of but we don't have any color morph here in brooksburg zoo and i wanted to have a black one so so bad but uh, yeah we just don't i wish we could have those color morphs i don't know if uh, those piebald animals are also um, being shown in sandbox mode um, maybe someone can tell me in the comments if it is uh, that way. I don't play franchise mode that often and I'm not uh, that much into breeding animals in franchise mode and knowing what to do, how to get some uh, special color morphs or stuff like that. Um, so I would be very thankful if you tell me in the comment section if it is actually possible for me to get those piebald animals or something like that here in sandbox mode as well. I'm thinking Thinking of uh, especially the Bactrian camel does have pea balls. I think the dromedary camel does have them as well. And I think the springbok and the Nayala and the red fox, of course. But I'm not quite sure if there's any other animals. So uh, if you can tell me in the comment section, I would be very happy and very thankful for that. So thanks in advance for that. And I also have to, th uh, to say thank you for the engagement of you guys. Um, I was asking you guys, I think, was it in this video or was it in the video of uh, Litchfield Zoo? I asked for some examples of uncommon uh, animal habitats, uh, shared animal habitats and I think it was uh, Jonas that sent me a, a massive list of uh, some shared habitats that are quite not that common, uh, quite unusual and I'm very thankful for that and I will see if we can do something here in Brooksburg and also in Litchfield as well because I'm very much into that especially in uh, in Litchfield I think we don't have a single shared habitat in there here in Brooksburg we do have two right now we do have the Asian small cloud otters and the Binturong right across the main street here and we do also have uh, our little African savanna here with the black rhino the adax uh, the I wanted to say springbok but it's not the springbok uh, the dama gazelle and now the ostrich and we are maybe going to have another shared habitat in the next episode here hmm. what could it be i don't know
Well, I know you don't. <laughs> you don't know yet, but you will for sure know latest in the next episode. Or if you are joining my Discord server, you can find the link in the video description. You might catch a glimpse on it in the next few days when I'm starting to build on that, because I always post photos and um, yeah on my Discord channel of the things that I'm already doing and I also do post um, many of those videos, uh, not videos, many of the footage on Twitter as well. So you can also follow me on Twitter. Just finishing the habitat right now, putting down the barrier, had some decoration for the entrance or exit on the other side of our living desert area and then we are ready for the animals and I think we are going into the real part. Yeah, and here we are already in the real-time part. So this means we are going to have a look at our animals, uh, at our dromedary camel, and also at the habitat. At this point, I just have to say thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, thank you for hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. In the next episode, as I told you guys, we are going to finish the living desert area. So we are going to have a nice habitat with a nice and big building with some big animals as well. And I am very excited to read what you guys think what I am planning, what we are going to have in here. And for those guys that already know, because I remember telling some of you guys uh, in private chats or something like that, what animal is going to be in here. Shh, don't tell anybody yet, <laughs> okay? So thanks again for watching guys. Have fun with the rest of the video and don't forget to tune in next Monday when we are going to finish the living desert in Brooksburg Zoo. Bye guys!